Welcome to Luxor Temple. And there you're looking at one of the largest obelisks ever made and raised into a region of giant figures, each one made of one piece of stone on a base. And that tells you that they, not only are they megalithic, but they are also pre-dynastic sculptures. So also you see the damage. The damage was done during the cataclysm. And look, the... How, how does the obelisk do so well? What? How is the obelisk doing so well? Or is that... It is amazing it's doing so well. It's actually listing slightly to the yeah. left, if yeah. you can see. So the ground, the ground settles. But as you go up to... Yeah, as we go up to them. And then also the first pillars as we go inside, they're all solid, like solid pieces of granite, not sections. So that's the dead, the dead giveaway. Yeah. So again, the, this obelisk is one piece of stone. The dynastic Egyptians did not have the technology to shape granite to such an incredible degree like that so that's telling us that the obelisk is pre-dynastic megalithic and the hieroglyphs on it the hieroglyphs are original and it's on a base made of quartzite so the obelisk itself was cut out of the quarry at Aswan, oh which is south to us. And then the quartzite base is from Cairo, which is north to us. So just look at the sheer size. You're looking at one piece of stone. And here's the other one. They always come in pairs. And the face is missing because they were hit by a massive cataclysm. The cataclysm blew the faces off. The force came in this direction. But doesn't it seem like it's always the faces that get it? Like, well, no, it's just it, uh, no, no, because the giant one that was at the Ramesseum, it was facing the other way. Oh, it, was, it was facing into the Valley of the Kings. Yeah. That's why it's, the back of it is all burnt. No, I'm, I'm just, oh, okay. So you see major damage on the front, less less on the side, and probably nothing on the back. And then this is likely a dynastic period thing. Shove a, a wooden block in there to try to hold it together because you see the massive crack that's coming through it. And then you have really crappy, well, relatively crappy work here. So th this is dynastic accenting. You see they can't even cut a straight line because of these deep arcs that are in there. And then here, if you put your finger down through here, it's 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 um, like a, the accuracy is incredible, or the continuity of the curve. So that's like a like a router went in there and did the cutting, and in here, it's all very consistent. And then when you face this way. 
You see, all of a sudden the columns are offline. They're going that way. So that tells you something happened to the axis of the Earth in between the construction of this line and that line. That's all dynastic in that direction. This is pre-dynastic here. So this is the most obvious example of seeing that the pre-cataclysmic mega builders were responsible for these. And then the site was adopted by the dynastic people and they built all that magnificent work going that way. We'll also see the columns here are one solid piece of stone made of granite or related material. Not these ones, but... You see, this is one piece of stone. And the cartouches were, were carved in later. The ones in the back are dynastic because they're sections. It's put together in sections. This is one single piece. So this is what we call the Comitian, you know, we call the Comitian time period, the pre-dynastic. If we just look at the rest of the structure, we find out that it is gathered from many other structures. So that's why Brian is saying this is a single solid piece of granite that looks like more of the work of the pyramid builders. But of course it has the writings from the New Kingdom and the, the rest of the structure, as you can see, where is the rest of that pillar inside this? This looks so more like graffiti. Looks yeah, that came later. That's yeah. yeah, real bad. It's just graffiti. And then these these two seated figures too. These are pre these are pre dynastic. Yeah. So as soon as we go beyond those two figures, then we enter the dynastic period, and that's why the angle shifts. And also on the left-hand side, we'll see the so-called Ramses figures that were taken from the area of the Colossi of Memnon. They were found buried underground. This change of angle, is that publicly acknowledged to be the result of the change of the Earth's axis? Yeah, by me it is. I don't know How what... How does everybody else pick that? I have, I have no idea. Hmm. Yusuf? Huh? How, do, how do archaeologists explain the change in the angle of the, of the central pathway? I would guess that they relate this to Ramses and they relate this to Amalfa. But why would why would there be a, a change in the because angle? The, uh, two parts were built in two different times. Because they believe all this section is Ramses and all the back section is Amenhotep. Yeah, but it's a change in, in the angle. Which yeah. the, okay, so these are the one of them has a car has the cartouche of Ramses the second. And you can tell that it's carved later because it goes over a dagger that's that's there. I think it's the central central figure, or the one on the right. Yeah. See, there's the cartouche of Ramses II, and it overlaps the dagger, which doesn't make any sense. Are we allowed to touch that? That one over there? No. The crown? Okay. Good. Whoa! There goes Mark. So feel the surface here. That's perfectly machine smooth. That could not have been done by hand. That had to have been done with a machine.
also His successor, Merim Petah. Uh -huh. So two different names of two famous usurpers. Right. So did you feel the? Okay, and finally we have these two figures too. So these are pre-dynastic. This is the straight line. And here it bends to the left that way. So this is all dynastic construction. Several sections put on top of one another. Farther back there we saw pillars made of one piece of granitic stone. That distinguishes the difference between pre-dynastic and dynastic. There's the mosque in the background.
here's a lady for a sense of scale. So we're not detracting from the fact that the dynastic Egyptians did incredible work. We're just distinguishing the difference between what they found when they first entered Egypt and what they made. Almost every one of the, or probably every one of the great uh, dynastic sites like Luxor and Karnak show a much older megalithic aspect, just like what we find in Peru. You find the Inca work, but quite often there's the megalithic pre-Inca work. So Luxor is a place that's great to visit. Now we're going to walk down to the end towards the Holy, uh, Holy of Holies. So then as far as I can tell, we go from Dynastic into Ptolemaic. This, here's where you start to have Greco-Roman influence. So these sites are very complicated. Construction over the course of thousands of years. But another illumination here is you have what is probably a Greco-Roman cap piece put on top of a solid granite pillar. And look at the weathering on the solid granite pillar. That tells us that the pillar itself is pre-dynastic. Okay, we're going to go through all the way to the very end of Luxor. three-dimensional hieroglyphics and depictions defaced over the course of centuries by different people. Okay, now we're going to the very end. Okay, we're going to walk all the way back through the site. Mm
of course, the farther we went that way, the younger the construction. So this is the far end, so there's Greco-Roman influence here with the much more ancient solid columns here. Granite columns, all the rest of this is limestone and sandstone. Limestone and sandstone were the materials during the dynastic and uh, later ending Ptolemaic period. Now we're going back in time and we're into the dynastic construction work here. Like big beams in sections. It's not geopolymer stone, it's solid stone. Oops. So the great dynastic columns. And then through the last section of it's okay, the giant columns here. So so far going backwards, we've been following a straight line, of course, because almost all temples in different parts of the world are aligned to the cardinal directions of north, south, east, and west. But we're going to come up to a spot where the angle changes and that gives us an indication that the section we're about to enter is the oldest part and it's when the axis of the earth was different than during dynastic times. So again, here we, we are. Here it comes. Okay, so watch this. Now we're entering the megalithic part. And the angle shifts by that much. Figures, starting here. This is one piece of stone, granitic stone, likely from the Aswan Quarry which I think is at least 200 miles away. And then here is the partner piece. There's the base. One seated piece of stone. Then one seated figure. And then during dynastic times, these columns were introduced, multi-section columns out of sandstone. This is granite, a very hard stone. This is sandstone, a very, uh, quite a soft stone. And then our big granite solid one-piece figures that were found close to the um, Colossi of Memnon. We have the top of a sculpture here. Look at how polished the surface is.
perfectly curved. No error, no mistake. Compound curvature. Polished almost to the point of being like glass. Very, whoops, cone head looking. Once again, this is one solid piece of stone. So we have a mix of dynastic and pre-dynastic. The dynastic are the columns and the lintel beams on top. And then we're going to head back outside and we're going to see the giant figures. So columns built in several sections, almost like a Tootsie Roll shape, one stacked upon another, small enough that several workers could raise each section up at a time. Then we're back into our solid column here. This is one piece of stone. So one piece of stone here going all the way up to there, right next to it, dynastic, multiple sections, oh this one's better to show. You can see the seat, the horizontal seam, so you see section on top of section, on top of section, on top of section on top of section like that as compared to this one smaller yes but one piece of stone I didn't see the big ones So here we go. There's the base, and then this is this is one piece of stone going all the way up to there. And its companion piece is here. That one big block is the base. And then one, there you go, one piece of stone going all the way up, probably 300 to 400 tons, moved from the quarry in Aswan. And we have the great obelisk. This block on the bottom is quartzite. On top of another base made of granite here. And then the obelisk itself. One block of as one granite. We can move back for another sense of perspective. Here's our obelisk.
and our two giant seated figures. And other giant figures, again, probably separate base, but then one piece of stone. And this is the base of in Paris that was moved, I think, in the 19th century. And again, a very large block of quartzite stone, very hard. And what else do we have to see? So again, a very large standing figure here. And a final look, close up, of the obelisk. Now, if you don't have anything intelligent to share, please don't bother commenting. Okay, so that's it from Luxor. Tomorrow we go to Abydos. We're going to the Temple of Seti I. And we're going to also be seeing the Osirion. The Temple of Seti I is a di giant dynastic construction. And the Osirion is a megalithic pre-dynastic construction that was made, constructed actually underground. And other places we're going to be visiting on these on this tour in the coming days are Dendera and uh, then relatively after that we're going to be flying back to Cairo. We're going to have a private access to the Great Pyramid for just the our group. So look forward to that. We're also going to uh, more obscure sites like Abu Sir and Abu Ghurab. And I've been able to film tons and tons of, of video so far on this trip. And then after that, we're going to Lebanon to see Baalbek and the Baalbek Quarry. Uh, also the ancient city of Byblos. And all, as well, we're going to Jordan. We're going to Petra and Little Petra and the Dead Sea. And so I hope you've enjoyed this so far. And thanks to those of you who have been following, following me on my... Uh, adventures and I'll, I'll sign off but I'll let you have a little bit more of a look at uh, and I, I will be doing hopefully some live from Baalbek stuff if I can get a, ch a chip from my phone so this is Brian Forrester of Hidden Inca Tours Signing off for now.